I've got a very special active self-protection extra for you today. My social media has been absolutely awash the last couple of days with the video out of Florida of four young men who are you know, having a gun pulled on them as they're getting some gas while they're on vacation. Well, a, f a cousin of theirs is a friend of mine on Facebook and connected us and I got a chance to sit down and talk with these guys over FaceTime. So man, there's some really interesting stuff in this particular video, hearing from them what happened in their encounter, how that affected them, and then there's a little surprise at the end that reminds us all to know our laws and carry our guns, so listen in. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of New Bold Targets. New Bold Targets are self-sealing, reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. Guys, thanks so much for talking with me. You guys have become like an overnight national sensation. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. crazy. Like, I, you know, it's really funny. So, you know, your cousin, one of y'all's cousin sent me the video first and was like, this was a little crazy. And then I, and then my fans, dude, like I, I get mail from all over. Right. And I got like so many messages. Holy crap. Have you seen this one? Yes, I got it. I've seen it. <laughs> Holy cow, man. So tell me each one of your names. Um, I'm Alex Wisby, A-L-E-X-W-I-S-B-E-Y. My name is Jacob Tanous, J-A-C-O-B-T-A-N-O-O-S. Uh, Alan Tanous, A-L-E-C-T-A-N-O-O-S. Eric Wisby, A-R-I-C-W-I-S-B-E-Y. Well, so, okay, so obviously I think a lot of people have seen it. I'm definitely going to do a narrative video on it. Are you guys familiar with what I do at all? Um, a little bit. You pretty much... Um, like critique yeah, videos critique and videos, things like that. Like, Help out like with uh, gun safety and all those kinds of things. Yeah, so people send me real-life surveillance videos of armed robberies, carjackings, muggings, stabbings, home invasions. And I do after action reports on them. So I walk through, here's what happened to somebody. This is what really happened to somebody in their world. And then here's kind of what we can learn from it. Okay. Yeah. And so that's going to go on the big channel. The big channel's got about 1.3 million subscribers, give or take. So um, it, it'll be out there in the world. I mean, it already is. It's been on so many news yeah. outlets, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's but uh, doing stuff like this. I have a second channel that has about 68,000 subscribers on it. And what we do with this is I like actually talking to the people who are involved because like there's one thing seeing it on camera, but there's another thing seeing it through your eyes, you know? Yeah, 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 so, uh, okay. So before we get started on the actual event, do any of you guys have any formal self-defense instruction? You guys martial artists or anything like that? Um, I mean, I, I was a two-year criminal justice student at Ivy Tech. Um, I had really these two good instructors, um, J uh, Jamie Houston and Jim Archer, um, both ex-military, uh, ex-policemen. And they taught us and took us through a defense class and um, how to get hooks in whenever you, you know, get a rear naked choke or how you're supposed to stretch the body and get your feet around it and things like that and, and how to disarm too. Okay, so you've had some. Just a little bit, yeah. Nice. And you other guys, not so much. Um, not so much, uh, right. Like uh, our father, he was an ex-police uh, officer in Indiana, a mm -hmm. former police officer in Indiana. But, uh, I mean, like as far as, like, training like that, us, no, not really any nope. training or anything. Didn't like scrap a bunch in high school or anything like. <laughs> We're love this man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I get it. So, uh, and you guys are just on spring break, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah my twenty first. It's twenty first slash spring break. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so walk me through now. It's like three o'clock in the morning. You guys stop for gas and snacks. Yeah, we stop for gas at this gas station, Mobile One, about three forty in the morning. And uh, I'm sitting in the back of the car, you know, we're making sure the area was well lit up. And uh, my brother, Alex, had got it, gotten out to pump gas at the car and uh, he had the red, white and blue shirt on. And as he's pumping gas, Jacob and Alec are standing outside the car with them. And then this uh, Mercedes that was sitting to our left pulls away. And about 30 seconds later, what do you know? A guy with a gun comes running up on us. I, and it's just crazy, right? Insane. So crazy. Insane. And so, I mean, like, so I'm like, I'm watching, I, 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 who was it that walked, try to like walk past the guy and the guy's like, nah, man, you're coming with me. Yeah, I was yeah, probably, I, 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 like, who put the gun on my, uh, like 
right in my gut. Okay. So go back and big brother right next to me. He came up behind him and kind of got a hold of him. And now, all of a sudden, they're scrapping. Now, okay, what made you decide instead of going, okay, dude, take my wallet? Like, no, nah, man, I'm not having it. I'm going to fight you for this gun. Well, I didn't know if he was going to shoot him. I didn't. That was the last thing that I wanted was any of us get hurt. But uh, definitely, you know, it's 21st, my little brother. So uh, I just, I don't know what I thought at the time. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you. But I, just, I was just trying to get the gun out of his hand mainly. So I kind of like grabbed for the gun. And so I only have like grabbed hold of the barrel of the gun. And that's when he kind of moves like this. Right. And so I also now he's facing this way while they're all still back there. And that's when my cousin Alex comes from behind while he's facing me and puts, gets, you know, in a chokehold kind of. So by that time, we're making a lot of noise. He gets out of the car. And then I don't know if you're going to go that. Um, and then uh, Eric gets out of the car. Um, you can kind of see him get out of the car. He's a little dazed, you know, um, because he's not really sure what's going on. And, and as, as none of us were, because at first, I think all of us kind of thought that the whole thing was a joke that, you know, some spring breakers that may have been trying to pull on us or anything like that. But, you know, as soon as we saw the gun and as soon as we saw the motion of him actually trying to get the hammer back, um, you know, we kind of went, I think his fatherly instincts kind of took over, you know, cause you always have that psyche in your mind where when that does happen, it's fight or flight. Um, and then as soon as I saw my opportunity, when his back was turned to me, I knew that he was distracted and I knew that I could get my arm underneath his chin where I could apply the most pressure and weaken him enough to get him to the ground and try and defuse it as much as possible. And then that's when the second guy came up. We had even no idea that he was even there. Right. Yeah, so uh, I definitely saw your, Alex, your, I mean, when you get on the guy and you start trying to choke him, I'm like, okay, that guy's got at least a little bit of training, right? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, either I, that or he watches a lot of UFC, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I, I am a huge uh, MMA fan. I've, I've watched, you know, from John Jones to Anderson Silva. I've studied their film. I really love jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai. Um, I, I, the, the whole thing in the situation was actually when I had taken him to the ground, um, the way his body was positioned, it almost was perfect for me to take him into a go-go plata, which had crossed my mind. Hmm. Uh, that way he was almost locked up and I had control of his upper body in a space to where if they did come down to it, I could apply pressure with punches or anything, elbows, anything like that to kind of, you know, weaken him enough to where he was disoriented and we could focus on the other guy. Right. So second guy comes in, but for a long time, man, that gun was kind of floating out there. Now, yeah, absolutely. I heard somebody say that that gun was ending up being non-functional. Was that true? Um, the gun was actually fully loaded. The cops did uh, confirm that it was loaded and there were bullets in the magazine. Um, you know, when Alex had taken him to the ground, my whole worry was to grab the gun. Because sure. then he had put the gun to my brother's torso. And, you know, we're all family. We've all been really close, you know, our whole entire lives. We've done everything together. So the whole thing was to keep each and every one of us safe. And I knew in my mind, if I could get my hands on the gun, the whole situation and the whole thing would have changed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, it, but it was a functional firearm and it was loaded. As far as we know, it's functional. It was loaded, yeah. If wow. You go back, if you go back and watch the uh, video, as uh, I'm struggling with him with my arm underneath his chin, um, and I'm taking him to the ground. You can actually yeah. see him reach for the gun and yeah. try and load it back. You can see him trying to get the, either the safety off or you can see him trying to get that hammer cocked back because I'm not sure if he had one in the chamber or not, but he was definitely trying to get it loaded because he was starting to panic. So you got the gun away from him, yeah. which is awesome. He ended up with a strength battle, right? Like, I'm just going to rip this stupid gun away from the guy because I got buddies here yeah. or whatever. I ended up just jerking it away from him. I, had, I think I had a better grip on it than he did. You know, I think he was really nervous. His hands were probably sweating because yeah, yeah. when he first came up, it looked like his hand had slipped off the gun to load it. So, I mean, it looked like he was nervous and scared himself. Right. And so I'm curious. Okay, so his buddy, you finally drive his buddy off, right? And he's off doing yeah. his thing. You take the gun away from him. Then he kind of like saunters off and is like jawing at you as he goes. Do, yeah. you, do you remember what he said to you? Uh, he's like screaming at us, you know, telling us to calm down, calm down, you know, give us the gun back and we'll just leave. And, you know, I'm, I'm yelling at him, you know, I'm absolutely ballistic. I'm going crazy screaming, you know, and it was just a crazy, crazy situation. Yeah, no kidding, man. But they bounced, right? They left and, and it's cool. Yeah. How long did it take the cops to show up? I don't know. Because when they first got there, I was like, 
what took so long? But they were like, took so long. We got here as fast. And there was like a lot, like five, six cop cars. They, they did get there fast because I remember it had been like a half hour um, after we had already been talking to them for a while since it happened. And I was like, it seems like it's been two hours, but it only, yeah, so yeah. time was like all messed up in my mind at least. Well, the, the point on that actually, um, that if I could uh, say something on that, with, with the struggle that happened throughout the entire thing, I mean, we were probably, um, you know, in that altercation for almost 10 to 15 minutes. And as that altercation was happening, the clerk at the gas station, did he did nothing. He did not call 911. He, uh, you know, he actually shooed Jacob out of the store, kept us from coming in, almost tried to lock the doors on us. And the dispatcher was on the phone with Jacob trying to get the address. And we're from out of town. And we had no idea what the address was. Right. He actually wouldn't allow us into his establishment. You're like on your phone, like trying to find freaking Google Maps and go, where am I at? Right. Literally, and his phone's on one percent. I like. I knew the street, uh, like the crossroads that we were at, but I didn't know exact. They wanted the exact address. Yeah. And I like. I don't know why I couldn't see the numbers, but finally, after he shoot me out, I finally found it was on the side of the, wow. the side of the building, nine oh one, and I still didn't know if it was, you know, we were on Oakland Park and Powerline Road. I didn't know exactly the address. They wanted the exact address. So I told him. We're at Mobile One gas station on Oakland Park and Power Line. They said, give me the, the actual address. I never, I don't think I ever did get the actual address because he, he went like this to me after, as I walked in. And his phone was also on 1%. All of our other phones had been dead. There was, there was no other way besides Jacob to get a hold of him. Wow. Wow. So once they got there, what did you guys do with the gun in the interim waiting for the cops to show up? As I, I was on the phone with the police, she said, I said, I would told her exactly what happened. I said, you know, we did get the gun. She said, so you guys did touch the gun? I said, yes. She said, okay, put it on the ground until the cops show up. So not long after that, the cops do show up. And she said, okay, the cops are there. You can hang up with me and they'll take it from there. So then the cops come, get the gun. I don't, I don't know if they put gloves on. Well, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember if they put gloves on either. But I just placed the gun down, took a couple steps back. And, you know, they handled the situation. They did an awesome job. You know, Broward County and Fort Lauderdale Police Department did an amazing job with this whole situation. Nice. Now, I didn't see in the news story. Did they catch these guys yet? Uh, the getaway driver has been caught, but no. the gunman is still at large. Yeah, they, yeah, but once they get one of them, they know who that other guy is. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> so what would you guys say are the lessons you learned? What what stands out to you from this? What What is it doing to you internally going forward? Um, you know... I think we did mostly everything uh, that right that we could have done. We checked to make sure that was a well lit up area. You know, we checked to see if there was other people at the gas station. So we weren't the only ones there. And, um, you know, I, it was just such a crazy situation. I'm not sure what we could really take from it besides, you know, always be aware of your surroundings and be safe. And if you can have a firearm on you. Yeah. I mean, obviously, right. That would have maybe made a difference uh, in that moment, but. We're both concealed carry. Uh, this Eric and me, we both have concealed carry. We've uh, we shot firearms since we were 12 years old. Mm -hmm. We grew up shoot, you know, shooting, hunting, learning things like that. Um, I have no doubt in my mind. If I would have had my sidearm, he would have never got within 10 feet of us. Absolutely. So, so then the question, of course, comes: Why didn't you have your gun on you? We flew you down here. Yep. You know, you can take a gun on an airplane, right? Really? Did not know that. <laughs> yeah, you can check it in the in your check baggage. Check Completely Yeah, legal. we had no idea. No idea. So you didn't know you could have it. So I don't know if... So you guys are from Indiana, yeah? Yeah. I'm pretty sure Florida recognizes an Indiana permit. So... Uh, we're not sure. You know, when we got them, they told us it was only uh, eligible in the state of Indiana that it wasn't allowed across state lines. So... All right. Hold on a second. You guys are, you guys are over 21? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> I'm not, okay. I'm not. That's that's information great, we that, need. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a great thing to know. So, yeah, my favorite resource for everybody on this is handgunlaw.us. Um, and if you go there, there's a um, PDFs for every state in the union. So you can see here's its gun laws. Here's the permits they recognize. Uh, let's see, Florida licenses. We're in Florida. It recognizes Indiana. Yep, your guys' permits were valid. Wow. So um, you'd have to have, there's a particular way to lock your gun up in your check baggage. Um, okay. And you can't, I mean, you can't carry it on. Don't try to carry a gun in your carry on. That'll get you in a big trouble, right? But you can check yeah. it. And so, wow, man. So you guys didn't know that. Do you normally yeah. carry it when you're at home? Always. Always. Oh, Always. wow, man. Okay. So now you guys have challenged me to be a better educator and to make sure more people know what the laws are. 
Yeah, <laughs> crazy. We carry everywhere we go. I mean, there's not one day. I mean, even when I go to work, I work with uh, uh, the company Rescare. They you know, they look after disability patients and things like that. People can't you know go through everyday life without help. I even carry to work. You know, I, I carry when I go to to go get food. Anytime that you know, I carry everywhere because you know the world's crazy. Yeah, man. Well. I guess it worked out okay, and the Lord was looking out for you, right? <laughs> yes, sir, he was. Man, all, the, all the news networks we spoke to, he spoke to numerous, you know, even left-leaning yeah. um, news networks, and, and they cut out everything he said about carrying or anything like that. So, Well, you know, okay, so that's my life, right? I carry everywhere I go, teach people firearms, teach self-defense, empty-handed skills. So that's going to make it in there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. So a couple things that I saw, just just FYI. Number one, attitude is everything, right? So and you guys said, look, I'm not going down like this. And okay, that that's the biggest thing. When you have an attitude that says, I'm going to win this fight, that matters more than everything else combined, okay? Uh, mindset first, right? So then, yeah, tactics and techniques. Well, I mean, a little bit of training definitely came through, right? And you said, look, I'm an MMA fan. I've watched it. I've trained it a little bit. I've got a few things here. Okay, cool, man. A even any tools in your toolbox there are better than nothing. You guys work pretty well as a team. Um, I mean, so, you know, you, you were kind of like, no, this is family. I'm going to jump on there. So that, that's really good. Watching um, you guys wrestling for the gun and then him getting away from you and having that gun, I thank God that guy wasn't a killer. So definitely some luck involved here. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah sure. No question, right? Because when when you start wrestling for the gun and he got away from you, if he just decides, no, I'm plugging everybody, you got trouble. So now mm -hmm. I'm, of course, say, boy, you guys, before you go anywhere else, just hit handgunlawyer.us. Is this cool for me to carry my gun here? And where it is, make sure you've got it. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, obviously, thank God it worked out. OK, that's great. It's totally fine. Right. I always say success covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> so it's totally cool. Right. Um, and and yeah, I mean, of course, I'm going to encourage you guys all um, a higher skill level for everybody is better for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So uh, any kind of classes are great. And I tell you what. Um, you guys, I travel the country. I'm going to be in Iowa a little later this year. I'm going to be in Nebraska later this year. Um, any of you guys want to come and train with me in handgun skills or empty handed skills, it's on me. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, for sure, man. And, and awesome. I got, uh, I know, uh, I'm actually, you know, I don't know if you guys are cool with this, but I'm going to be at the NRA annual meetings at the end of April in Indianapolis. And, um, if you guys are in the area that weekend, I uh, dinner's on me. Oh my! Yeah, if you could shoot us an email with the date of that uh, that meeting, we would love to make it there. That'd Absolutely, awesome. man. Absolutely, and maybe we could talk some more then. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Legit. Okay, Eric, I will send you an email um, with dates and all that stuff, and you've got my phone number now, and yes, I'd sir. love to see you guys some more. And congrats to you guys, and and uh, um, use your fame for good and not for evil. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man.